Yep. Okay. All right. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning to every, everyone wherever you are in the world. I'm Eric Lai, director of the social media channels and the blogs here at BlackBerry. Let's welcome to uh, welcome to our first ever Facebook Live webcast. With me today is Alex Thurber, senior VP for device sales here at BlackBerry. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, Eric. Um, Alex is starting to become a familiar face uh, for, for us here at BlackBerry. He was one of the executives who helped launch the DTEC phone on Tuesday. And uh, you can catch the video of the launch at our YouTube channel, by the way. So now today, Alex will be taking uh, your questions about our new secure, slim, and affordable DTEC 50 Android smartphone. Alex has got it right there. <laughs> we're uh, pretending we're on QVC right, exactly. for a moment right there. So you can learn more about the phone by watching our videos visiting blackberry.com forward slash dtech50, reading our blogs, or going straight to shop Blackberry if you um, care to do that. You can pre-order the phone right now and get a free charger until August 8th. And so uh, besides DTech and uh, the secure Android um, operating system and all, all the Blackberry goodness, we're going to talk, uh, we'll take questions uh, from our, our fans about, um, about our ongoing support for Blackberry 10. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you have saw questions there. And for phones, you know, like the password that I use myself. So a few housekeeping notes. First, send your questions in the Facebook window next to the video if you're interested, if you've got something to ask. We'll try to answer as many as possible. We also will probably kick off with some questions that have, uh, people have sent previously on social. Second, this is our first uh, webcast, so um, please be patient if there's any technical difficulties. Uh, but let us know in, in the chat window if you, if you are encountering any. Uh, third, we'd love everyone to be very respectful and kind of stay on the topics at hand. And if the conversation turns hostile, we may have to end it a little bit early. So, okay, first, um, let's talk about uh, DTEC 50. I know one of the big questions everyone wanted to ask about is, why? what's the name? What's up with the name DTEC 50? Sure. Well, and again, Eric, thanks very much for this opportunity to, uh, to address our Facebook audience. I'm, I'm very excited about that. Um, and one comment on the Shop Blackberry. If you pre-order today or for the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. that battery pack is actually a... It's a, it's a battery charger, so it's a, it'll recharge your phone about six times on one master charge itself. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great device. It's worth about it's worth sixty bucks. So yeah, yeah. It's a great premium. Right, right. Perfect for Pokemon Go, which I hear is a total battery. It charger. is. In fact, it's funny. Um, I just finished a three-day press tour uh, and been in Waterloo, Toronto, and New York, and I was traveling with one of our design experts who is a Pokemon Go fanatic. And so everywhere we were going, including in the Lincoln Tunnel. He was looking for Pokemon. Uh, with his DTEC? With his DTEC, absolutely, DTEC 50, of course right. with his DTEC 50. <laughs> so why did we call it the DTEC 50? And actually, that really ties into this whole idea of a secure smartphone, and, and it ties into why, did, why are we able to say that this is the world's most secure smartphone. Um, the funny thing about security, and I've been in the security business for 25 years, is when everything's working right, really nothing happens right. because yeah, security, exactly, security is blocking things and taking care of them. But one of the things we wanted to make sure of is that you as a user were able to make choices as to what type of information you were sharing from your phone. Um, as you know, on an, on an Android device, when you install an application, it asks, can I have access to this, your microphone, your camera, your location, and most people simply say yes. And in fact, on most apps, you have to say yes to everything. Well, what Detect the Applications allows you to do is to go in and see exactly what applications are accessing what parts of your phone and how right. often are they doing it. Uh, it's, it's a great tool mm -hmm. to understand visualizing the mm -hmm. security status of your phone. And it's amazing what you find. Um, right. You know, there's a flashlight application out there that uploads your location thousands of times to an unknown server. Right. It also turns on your microphone. Right, right. I'm not sure I want my flashlight you know, yeah. accessing my microphone. Exactly. So, and and DTEC, you can actually, from there, you can actually scan what's, um, what it's doing, but also take action. from. from absolutely. You can, you can block it so you can say, hey, my flashlight doesn't get to talk to my mic anymore. You can also set notifications. So, for example, I'm fine with Uber knowing my location because, of course, it has to be able to call a car. Mm -hmm. But I can also say I want to know when any other application is requesting my location. So it gives you a lot of information. Right. All right, so that's the application detect. And what yeah. we're doing with the phone is, again, highlighting the fact that it is a highly secure phone and by utilizing that same name, kind of driving the message. Right, right, right. And then kind of the number we have, like, um, we have the Z10, right. the Z30, 50. Absolutely. That's part of our heritage. Uh, you'll see other detect devices in the future, uh, including with other numbers. And the last thing is you might notice um, uh, on the logo where it's printed out, if it's color, 
that the T is is highlighted in green, that's to show that it's a full touch screen device. Right, right, right. So, but a, a full touch screen device with uh, kind of the the productivity of a BlackBerry virtual keyboard. Oh, oh absolutely. Talk a little bit about that? Yeah, about that's that? that's what's great. So I've only been at BlackBerry three months, uh, as you know, and. One of the things I loved about transitioning here is getting to know the BlackBerry Virtual Keyboard. I've certainly used a lot of glass keyboards in the past, and I do love a physical keyboard also, but for a glass keyboard, the whole, the whole idea of how we do the flip typing uh, is just great. The, the predictive ability where the keyboard learns how I talk mm -hmm. and, and the words I use, yeah. and it'll predict you know five or ten different words as I go to where I usually find after only one or two letters, I'm able to simply flip up the, that letter, that word, and keep going. It makes it much faster. Right, right, right. Um, another question, I guess, I guess about um, kind of a, a broader question. People are asking about, you know, it's a very sleek-looking phone, um, but the, you know, the branding is on the back. It's not on the front, and right. people are asking about that. You know, yeah, absolutely. It was a, de a design decision. We thought it looked good to have a nice, sleek front and just be very clear and, you know, kind of... Again, that very simple front, yeah. and then we uh, we very carefully put the logo on the back so that you do know it's a black turn. Okay. Speaking of the back, let's talk about that the textured uh, back of that. You know. Yeah, so, you know, BlackBerry is well known over the years for the ruggedness of our devices, and that's something that we took into account when we came around to designing and, and working uh, on the on the DTEC 50. So the back is a is a full plastic coating with some little micro dots on it, and it gives you a firm grip. And that's the whole idea behind behind that back. Yeah, um, I've had lots of phones over my mm -hmm. career, uh, a lot of iPhones, a lot of other Android phones, and I have to tell you, I've dropped them all. Mm -hmm. In fact, how many, uh, how many of those broke? Well, they they got dinged up. I mean, my <laughs> last phone, I have to admit, looked like it had gone through a rock crusher or something because <laughs> all the corners were dinged and all the rest. I've been beta testing this phone for six weeks. One of the advantages of working for a phone company is you get early access to the devices. I haven't dropped it once, and my oh. kids are amazed at that because they're used to my <laughs> flipping it all over the place. So that really makes a big difference. And then you'll also notice we have this anodized silver ring around it. That's to yep. add protection on the edges. And then finally, we have scratch-resistant and smudge-resistant glass on the front. Right, 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 which actually has a, some security uses. It does right. because it ensures that someone can't find, if you're using a pattern, a uh, password, someone can't go back and look and say what that pattern was yeah. or try to figure out what key presses you were making. Right, right, right. And, and, and kind of, you were kind of showing the side of the phone too. Mm -hmm. There's this convenience key, which uh, I think yes. is, is kind of neat. Yeah, it's, it, this, is a, this is a throwback to our previous BlackBerry heritage. Uh, this convenience key is great because you can program it to do almost anything you want. Um, you go into settings and you can program it to, to pull up a particular application, to dial a specific number, to send a text message or an email if you have something pre-programmed. Uh, what I do is I have it actually turn on my flashlight. So when I press it, it turns the flashlight on, and when I press it again, it turns it off. Just anything you want to do. Right, right. Um, I see one question here. So, someone is asking about the, the battery life of this phone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we should, traditionally we've had some pretty good battery life on our phones. It's one right. of our big features. It is, and the battery life on this is 17 hours with mixed use, which okay. is great. And uh, to be honest, a lot of that is because of our intellectual property and the technology we have on both the operating system level and the application management. So we are known for our battery management, and that's something that we are bringing into the Android arena. Okay. Okay, great. Um, you know, we have a question coming in. Someone's asking about uh, is this going to come to, like, which carriers can we expect this phone to be coming to? So this phone is a global phone. It's available all over the world, or uh, it'll be shipping in early August. Um, as you mentioned, it's a pre-order now on shopblackberry.com, and I believe I've seen one or two other sites uh, already up in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ranged on all three major carriers in Canada. It will not be, most likely it will not be retail in the U.S., in carriers. To be honest, in the U.S., we're focused on a business-to-business -business strategy with this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great consumer phone. It's a great phone for individuals, and it will be available through Best Buy and Amazon mm -hmm. and B&H, some of our, our great partners there. Um, but uh, in the U.S. carriers, while it will work fine as a GSM phone, uh, it'll be more on their business-to-business -business side. Okay. Okay, great. And Actually, by the way, I think on the web, we have a look, we have a on our website, you can go and find out what carriers are supported around the world. Right, right, okay. Um, I actually see comments saying that, you know, the volume's a little bit low, so we'll try and speak a little bit louder here. Oh, okay. Um, 
let's see. Yeah, it's our learning process, yeah, right? Exactly. This is our first time. Um, yeah, do you consider this like talk a little bit about like is it just um, it, it's a very good price point for consumers. I think they're going to love it. But what what are some of the advantages for businesses besides you know like if you're deploying to thousands of employees, obviously a low price point is important. No, absolutely. In fact, this is very much what we call in the business a fleet device. So we, uh, as we built it and as we designed it and all the rest, we made sure that we were able to come in at this particular price point because that allows for broad adoption by businesses, large mm -hmm. and small. And that's something that we really are pushing on and something that we're really focused on is making this available because, you know, especially in the small and mid-sized businesses, they are suffering the exact same security threats as larger companies because, to be honest, the attackers these days are going very broad. But let's be honest, most small and mid-sized companies don't have a large security staff or the resources to really implement that same level of security as a large enterprise does. So what we've done by bringing not only a very secure phone, the world's most secure Android smartphone, but in addition, BlackBerry's other software offerings around EMM and Watch Docs and some of the other software products that we have, we've made it possible for small and mid-sized companies to implement a very secure mobile strategy, which we think is very important going forward. Okay, okay. And, yeah, we getting some questions from Priv users, and mm -hmm. they want to know, would I like this phone? What, what would I think about this phone as a Priv user? Yeah, so I do want to clarify one thing on Priv, and I should have made this clearer on mm -hmm. Tuesday during the launch. Um, when we say this is the world's most secure Android smartphone, what we really should say is smartphones, mm -hmm. because both Priv and the DTEK50 run the exact same code base. So the manufacturing expertise that we put mm -hmm. into this phone, and then the mm -hmm. software and all the rest runs on both of the phones, so they're both very secure. Um, I think if you're a print user, you would like this phone. Um, obviously, you don't have the slide-out keyboard, so that's one of the big differences. Mm -hmm. Also, the Priv has a curved screen, and this has a, has a standard flat screen. Yeah. So obviously, the Priv was aimed at a, at, a very high, at a very specific price point. It's at mm -hmm. that premium level, and the DTEK50 is aimed at the broader base, so mm -hmm. you can make your own choice there. But certainly, right. if you like the Priv, you'd like the DTEK50. Yeah. I can imagine if you're like a Priv user, and you're having a good experience with it, you know, you might want to, um, if, you're, if you're one of those guys that's providing support, to f de facto providing tech support yep. for your family. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, the, this is a great phone that, and that you can easily support because it's so similar. It's secure and private in the same way. No, absolutely. In fact, I'm sure most of us who have technology backgrounds end up being our family's tech support. And I could definitely see yep. providing this to, uh, to the kids and everybody else in the family so that I would know how to support it properly. <laughs> um, Let's uh, jump to BB10 a little bit, since I, I know that we, we promised we'd talk a little bit about that. You know, can you share with us what is kind of our plans now for ongoing support for BB10 and how it is, it is actually still a viable choice for our customers? Absolutely, and I, I do want to make this very, very clear. We are absolutely committed to both the BB10 operating system and the secure BlackBerry Android operating system that we have developed. Because at the end of the at the end of the day, this is all about providing choice for our end users. If you have a BB10 device and you're comfortable within that ecosystem and you like the swiping and the uh, and the various features within it, that's outstanding. We are in fact bringing out 10.3.3, uh, the mm -hmm. next update to BB10 that should be released in the next couple of weeks, and our developers are already working on the next version. So yep. we're absolutely committed to that. What we've done with Android, of course, is bring those millions of apps from the, the Google Play Store and bring those on to a secure device as well. To be honest, I love apps. Um, you know, I, I couldn't live without them. Certainly all my travel apps, because I'm on yeah. the road all the time, banking, social media, all the rest of them. I really like that feature. So by allowing me to have access to the Google Play Store, and we are running absolutely full Android, so there is no customizations in terms of being able to run an Android app. If it's yeah. an Android app, it'll run on this. Uh, it'll run on the DTEK50 or on the Priv. So being able to do that allows our end users to, to have that full Android experience, but know that their security and privacy is being maintained. Okay, okay. Now, some of our um, kind of more techie fans have been asking, could it, would it be possible to have a dual boot device? You know, a BlackBerry phone that right. runs both operating systems, and secure Android and BlackBerry 10. You know, that's the second time I've been asked that question. That came up yesterday in one of the briefings in New yeah. York, uh, and I was surprised. So first, from a technical perspective, I don't have the answer to that, and we'll find out. Yeah. Um, 
I've posted a, a message back to our research team to ask. But I also, uh, you know, I was thinking through it from a security perspective. One of the features of this phone is it will notify you if it's been rooted mm -hmm. um, or uh, if someone's tried to break it or, or something like that. And so having a connection between the hardware and where we embed encryption keys and the operating system is very important. So I'd be a little worried if we got to the point mm -hmm. of where we're flashing other operating systems yeah. on the device. I'm not sure how that would work in terms of maintaining the operating system. Right. Because it, it's key to keeping everything secure. It is, right. Because, hey, if, if the OS isn't secure, you're, you know, yeah. you're done from the very beginning. Right, right. But so it's, a, it's a very interesting question. Right, okay. So dual boots and flashy, there's maybe some technical challenges there. Yeah, I think you there know. might. Yeah, I mean, obviously, internally, you've got different, different chipsets and all the rest. At the end of the day, you know, you might want to go buy, uh, buy both. Mm -hmm. uh, have a great Passport or Classic or Leap for BB10, and then have a DTEC50 for your Android experience. Okay, okay. Uh, another question coming in, you know, uh, people are asking, will there, you know, it's kind of a ro roadmap question, is mm -hmm. there gonna be a PRID version two, or what, What? you know, what about another keyboard device? So we are, we are on the Android journey, and we are continuing to develop new devices. Um, as, I, as I said on Tuesday, I'm very happy to confirm that this fiscal year we will be releasing a fully BlackBerry keyboard-based Android smartphone. Mm. So it will not be a slider, it'll be the full four-row um, BlackBerry experience that you expect when it comes to a keyboard. And that, uh, that's something that we're very excited about. The early, the early mock-ups look great, and that'll be available this fiscal year. Okay, okay. And you, you're out there, you're, you're talking to a lot of customers, they're, they're, you know, in terms of the carriers and the retailers, you know, they're, they're showing interest, right? They are. Um, I, I do get to spend a lot of my time out talking to customers, carriers, as you said, distributors, retailers, as well as our largest enterprise and government customers. As you know, most of the uh, major governments use our product because of the security. They use the mm -hmm. BB10 product. And I've been sitting down and sharing with them our security roadmap. They are very mm -hmm. comfortable uh, on Android. They yeah. are very comfortable on that. And they're very excited about the, uh, the upcoming keyboard-based phone. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, t talking about security, um, you know, okay, you, 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 I think be clear that, you know, our marketing, we, we talked about how it's the most secure Android phone, but in mm -hmm. fact, we, we actually want to reiterate and make it clear to everyone that DTEC and Priv are both equally secure, mm -hmm. both Correct. very secure in private phones. Um, talk, talk a little bit about, the, you know, um, kind of the latest advancements in the, that security secret sauce, how we're doing all these things, just so people can understand it a little bit, you know. Sure, and obviously, how we do stuff it has to be a little bit careful, yep. of course, because that is our secret sauce. Um, but what makes our products uniquely secure, especially on the Android side, is that we really look at end-to-end -end security. So there are Android phones out there that have bits and pieces of security here and there, but we start from the manufacturing process and embed crypto cryptography at the very beginning, yeah. crypto yeah, yeah. keys, and run it through the manufacturing process, which ensures that you're using the phone you're supposed to be using, that somebody hasn't gone in and yeah. done something funny on the hardware, and what's unique to BlackBerry is we have a global infrastructure that every time your phone lights up and connects to that infrastructure, it validates the keys. Yeah. So if something's gone wrong, if maybe overnight or you know you lost your phone for a few minutes or it got out of your hands and someone did something physical to yeah. it, it'll be able to report on that. So that's one of the things that's very different. But to be honest, I think the most important aspect of security is updating. Yeah, um, security patches. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I've been in the security business a long time. Uh, and when we began in this, this, this security journey, uh, we used to send out floppy disks. Now, for those of you who are younger, you have no idea what a floppy disk does. <laughs> but we'd send out monthly security updates, and we'd send them by mail. And today on a PC, your PC is probably updated three to four times a day with antivirus mm -hmm. updates and malware updates. So Google puts out a monthly security research bulletin where they highlight the security problems that, they have, that have been discovered over the last month in Android, because all operating systems have, have issues. Mm -hmm. um, BlackBerry is committed to releasing our patch on the same day that that research bulletin comes out. So it's a true zero day patch. Yeah. And why that's really important is, as you can imagine, as soon as Google releases that, that research information, all the bad guys download it and go, okay, here's a hole, and start yeah. building packs to work through that hole. And so far, other than Nexus, which of course is the actual Google phone, we are the only phone provider 
who is committed to that. And since we brought out Priv, we had I mean, we have kept that update schedule, right. and we will continue to do that going forward. Right, and that's, that's really that's the real way to minimize um, you know in, intrusions and hacks and malware is to really patch very diligently. Absolutely, we're great, and we're really good at that. And we are very good. And we these go out to all phones at the same time. They're pushed out immediately, and uh, it's very effective. Okay. Um, someone wanted to ask a little bit about the, um, the bands and the kind of the, the, the I guess the radio frequencies. Like, is it is this a CDMA or a GSM phone? Or there, can you share a little bit about the, the bands it'll run on? Yeah, and I'm learning a lot about radio technology and bands <laughs> in this job. Um, this is not a CDMA phone, okay. so it will not run natively on the Verizon network in the United States. Um, but it is a GSM World phone. It supports bands in I believe every country around the world. Um, there are a few particular bands on high-speed downloads where it may have challenges, but again, the technical information is available on the web. Okay. Okay, great. So they should definitely go to the website. And they, right. They can but as I said, I've been carrying it for six weeks, and I travel globally all the time, and I've not ever had any issues connecting to, uh, to yeah. the, the network. Okay, great. Great. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the camera. I think there's some interesting things about this camera, even though, you know, to achieve that price point, it's obviously this is not the highest of high end phones, but yet the camera I think is actually a standout for this in this uh, category. It is. Um, it's interesting. So the rear camera, rear facing camera, is 13 megapixel. It has a, a dual tone flash. The front camera is an 8 megapixel uh, camera, which is above mm -hmm. standard for this price point, yeah. which is great for video conferencing. And it also has a front selfie flash, so to make sure that you've properly lit all mm -hmm. those selfies that you take. But the other key part about this is, again, our secret sauce around the software. So we have a very good camera app, um, and our working with the camera allows it to be not yeah. only comprehensive in terms of filters and f-stop and, mm -hmm. and speeds and depths of field and all of that, yeah. but also very fast. So there's almost no shutter lag. It's a very fast, right. very good overall camera right. experience. Just so you can capture that image, because exactly. people underrate how important it is to be able to get the camera running and then right. you know, start up and, and yeah, I mean, if right. you're if you've got your child running a, doing this wonderful thing, and you have to start it and it waits and then you hit it and then it takes it, by then the kid's gone, right? Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. really need to be able to get something quickly. Yeah. No, that, that's that's perfect. The other thing I think is really uh, outstanding about this phone is that the potential for storage. Our micro SD slot, um, you know, you can we're a, you can store up to two terabytes right. of data. Uh, you know, through external storage right now. Because obviously exactly. there are no micro SD cards that big yet. Right. They're right. up to 256 megabytes. And actually I wouldn't, uh, gigabytes, and actually I wouldn't calculate that. We can, you know, with two, if you had a 256 micro SD card, you could store 38,000 high res photos right now, today. Well, that's more than I have. Um, <laughs> no, and, and I think that also goes to our whole philosophy of providing choice for our customers. Yeah. So we don't force you to decide up front how much storage you want in your phone and perhaps to pay dare I say, inflated prices for that storage. In fact, we, uh, we give you an SD slot. You can go by the SD card that you want. We encrypt it as part of the base operating system, so mm -hmm. it's, it's totally protected. And you can put in as much storage as you want. And then, of course, swap it out. If you fill, if you right. fill up with those 38,000 photos, then you can take it out and put another right. one in. Right, right. I mean, people forget there's actually a lot of phones, like leading phones, that don't have a micro SD card. In Absolutely. That slot, so. Yeah. Um, you know, so a lot of people have noticed that this phone does have a certain resemblance to a uh, popular coming phone, mm -hmm. the Alcatel um, Idol line. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about the resemblance? Sure. So, um, absolutely. So what we, what we chose to do after doing a lot of research is partner with TCL, who's the manufacturer of the Alcatel mm -hmm. phone. One of the largest manufacturers in the world, right? Correct. Um, and we partner with them for the base reference design. And to be honest, that's pretty typical in the overall technology world. And that allows us, again, to come to market quickly and to hit these particular price points. So yeah. they're a great partner. We've been working with them for a while, and we've worked with other partners in the past uh, mm -hmm. on different phone projects. Yeah. And then we work with them. We inject our secret sauce into the manufacturing line mm -hmm. as well as into the operating system and the applications from then on. Right, right. Okay, okay. And um, I think that yeah, I think that answers a lot. So it's very clear, obviously, we are partnering with them, and this is a, it's going to be a great partner. Oh, it is a very strong partnership. Our team is back and forth uh, all the time to their offices, and they've been very, they've been very amenable working with us. It's mm -hmm. been, it's been very positive. Okay. What about color? Someone actually asked, like, what colors will this phone come in? And I was tempted to do my Henry Ford joke and say, like, the Model T, it's available in any color you want as long as it's black. 
So this phone is available in this color. So it's a nice gray back and, and black and silver on the front. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're making. Again, we're driving the price point and we wanted to make this, yeah. we wanted to give every consumer the opportunity to have a secure and private phone. Right, and of course consumers have their choice in um, you know, whatever cases they want. Well, so that's a very good point. That's a great point. We do have a number of cases available now. Uh, third parties have developed some and more are coming. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can customize this from that perspective. Right, right. Um, you know, you know. Again, talking with um, okay. Let's talk about products. I know that, again, we've customized the Android UI, and there's a lot of apps that we bring to the to that we embed. You know, we install. You know, with the phones. Tell tell us a little bit about those and how those can make you you know more productive. This is a BlackBerry thing. No, it's a good question. In fact, that's kind of the second the second BlackBerry story, right? The first is security. It, it's in our heritage, and the second is productivity. And we have spent thousands of research hours on how to cut, how to help you save seconds on something mm -hmm. that you repeat over and over and over again. Um, you know, I don't think it will work very well for me to actually try and do a demo on this to show you, but there are a number of different features that we've put in that really makes this a very productive phone. It's one I've really enjoyed. First is, of course, the BlackBerry Hub, where you can bring together your email, your social, your text, your BDM yep. messages all into one, mm -hmm. one area so that you can read them, answer them, keep up to date, yep. delete them after you're done, keep accurate that, that way. The second is the BlackBerry calendar. Now, in my job, I am on conference calls all day long. That's what I seem to be doing. And what's great about the BlackBerry calendar is that it actually scans every meeting invite, parses it out, and finds out all the conference call information so that when it's time to join the call, you literally click the Join Now button, and it does all the dialing, it puts mm -hmm. in the conference ID, does all the pound signs and stars and all the rest. And you know, I've done so over the years, I've spent so much time scrambling to find a pen, writing on my palm, because it's always a 10-digit number. Right. And you know, you remember the first five digits, and then you go back and look, and by then the call's timed out, so it's just a mess. So I am completely spoiled with that join now button. And then other features as well, including the productivity tab, which allows you, it's, it's on the side of the phone, the phone screen, and you can put it on either side. Yep. But you swipe it over, it'll write on top of any app, including Pokemon Go. Um, mm -hmm. And it gives you a view into your calendar, so what's coming up next, what tasks do you have to do, what email, so that if you are engaged in some other activity, yep. you can stay productive with work yep. as well. Actually, someone is asking, you know, why don't we show a little bit of it? Demo. You want yeah, to I, I can bit? try. Um, it's uh, this is my actual phone, so uh, hopefully I don't have any terribly embarrassing things going on. But, but so uh, does this um, again? We're, we're experimenting for the first time here with this. So here's the actual screen. Can you see that at all? No. Okay. Um, so let me. Uh, so here's the BlackBerry Calendar app, and, and uh, as we let me see, if I can pull up an app a. Uh, and again, we're doing this all live, so we'll see how well it works. Um, here's a call I do with uh, on a regular basis. Now, this is a simple call, so it doesn't. Uh, let me find one that has the join now button because it's a conference call. You know, there's nothing better than live demos, especially uh, surprise ones. <laughs> right. So here we go. So here's a, a anybody in sales understands that a PO review call. And that Join Now button actually does the dialing, pulls in all the different conference information necessary, and makes things happen. This is the uh, productivity tab I talked about. So you can swipe that over as I did and see that you've got your calendar, what's coming up next, emails, tasks, contacts, et cetera. And that's available at the top of anything. So if I, if I had Pokemon Go and I was running it, that would allow me to take a look at that. Right. And then, of course, Hub gives you a variety, gives you access into all your different um, screens here. So um, my email, it also would add in social media and all those other areas that you're, that you're interested in. So, um, you know, this wasn't something that we set up as a demo device, so I hope everybody ignores what they <laughs> saw. But again, that yeah. gives you the idea, and uh, this is something where having a BlackBerry to play with and to experiment with really gives you some, some great opportunities. Right. It's a very, it's a great point to get. Uh, let's t ask, talk a little bit about accessories. What, what accessories can we expect with the iPhone? I think they're already on the shop. People can do Yeah, them, I mean, it, it's all the standard ones. We have uh, cases, both slip-on cases, flip cases. The cases have the smart window function, which immediately gives you a, a view into the most important things going on on the phone. 
yeah. uh, the time upcoming events, and you can actually interact with those events as you go. Uh, as I said, it's a holster version, or there's a close case. We also have the uh, the iconic BlackBerry holster that has a clip, and so you can put yeah. on your belt and move it around. <laughs> Um, we have uh, certainly earphones and, and all those other features. So right. you'd find that on the Shop Blackberry site or with our parties. Oh, we have some docs. I think you were asking if there's a... Um, I, you know, I don't know that. That's okay. a great question. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it'll, it'll come, we can it'll, find that out. Yeah, it'll come to the shop, whatever it, yeah. it is. Um, there's, there's some rumors talking about that we're not... That, you know, one of the, the things that's iconic about Blackberry is the, the, the flashing light. You know, yep. so let people know when you got email and, and messages. Um, you know, there's some rumors that there's that's actually gone. That's not true, though. That's actually not true. Here's a uh, another device. Uh, mine was flashing, but once I brought it up, of course, it stopped. But here's a device, and you can see the flashing light right there. Now, to be honest, it's a single color light, so it's this white light to flash if you to tell you if you have anything going on. And that was to be that was absolutely a design a design decision that we made. Um, Design is always about making decisions as to where do you want to put things, and we decided, again, to be able to achieve the price points that we did. It was more important to have a single flashing light versus to try and have the tricolor right. LED. Right, and, you know, I consider myself a, a decent power user, but I've never gone to the trouble programming all the different light colors and things. Flashing, flashing is not right. for me. Right. I was using a Perv before, and it took me a while before I was embarrassing. I realized that there were different colors you could program, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, these are great questions, by the way. I appreciate Yeah, I appreciate the audience. Everyone's yeah. been very polite and uh, respectful, I think. Um, you know, let's see. I think we've covered a lot on, on BlackBerry 10. Mm -hmm. On fingerprint sensor is something I, some people wanted to ask you because they, you know, that's available on some phones, not, mm -hmm. not, all, not all of them, and not even all, on all the phones that are going to be highly secure. Um, you know, obviously, we talked about, you know, certain trade offs yeah. with design decisions to make, to get a really attractive low price. Tell us a little bit of thinking around why we don't have one. Sure. So, um, to be honest, the number one reason on the fingerprints is lost. Um, there are a number of different models of fingerprint sensors, so you can definitely have a fingerprint sensor that is very secure. We weren't trying to make any contrary statement to that. Um, we do give you a number of different ways to authenticate the device today. You can do a picture password. You can do a, a swipe pattern. Mm -hmm. You can certainly do a, a four-digit code or an eight-digit code. As a security guy, I will tell you, you should have an eight-digit code as your as your password to your phone, and you still can use Google Pay and all the other things. You can just authenticate yep. through your regular style. So, yeah. you know, uh, we're always evaluating every device uh, based on the target market. Costing and all. Of I know people who have fingerprint sensors, and you know, they don't. They're not. You know, they don't always work 100. percent They're not always as fast as people as they show in like a commercial. Right. Know, so. Yeah, it is interesting, and you know this. This is very much, uh, while we love, you know, this, I think every consumer should buy one of these. Obviously, one of the markets that we are going after with this phone is our traditional enterprise and this customer. And enterprises have not made a final, you know, uh, that's a broad statement, but in general, they haven't made a final buy-off yet on mm -hmm. fingerprint sensors. Right. They're still concerned about all the intricacies. Right. I mean, because you're obviously very in touch with what enterprises and, right. and regulated industries think, and they, they're not fully convinced yet. That's correct. Right. Um, t t you want to talk a little bit about the performance of the phone, just overall, like, you know? And sure. I mean, it's a very fast phone. Uh, as I said, I've been using it as my primary device for five or six weeks now. It does have an uh, octa-core processor, Snapdragon processor. And one of the nice things that we did that's unique to the DTEK50 is we put three gigs of RAM in it, which uh, helps a lot either, you know, in, in any computing device, the more mm -hmm. RAM, the yeah. less swapping you have to do makes the device snappy and makes it function better. And that's particularly true if you're running business apps like Android for Work mm -hmm. or Good, the contain, you know, business can either be help at the same time. So I've found it to be a very fast phone. I have not had any any lag issues at all. Right, right, right. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I, think, I, I think performance will be, you know, very good for people. Who, I, I think, because we, we we've done some things to make sure that the performance is going to be, Nice. Absolutely, we, you know, we, we. This is stock Android, and which runs, of course, on a, on a Linux kernel underneath it. And we've done a lot to harden both of those, and we've also done a lot to tweak them so that it is, you know, that's that's what helps gives us our battery performance. It's what help gives us the uh, and the speed, the speed and agility. Okay. Okay. Great. I think. Um, okay, we've been getting a lot of questions here. I think so, someone asked about. Oh, 
I mean, I'm, yeah. I guess so. This is a single SIM phone, yeah. not a dual SIM. Um, what we decided is that it was more valuable to give you the option of SD card so yep. to be able to put yep. SD in and expand your memory to whatever side yeah, yeah. than dual SIM. And that was just a you know, it was just a design yeah. decision. Right. Um, but again, that is up to two terabytes, which is absolutely. The, the, which I think is, it's uh, a lot of storage. It is a lot of storage, and uh, you know, that's yeah, that was just a design decision to make. I, I personally, and I travel globally all the time, I appreciate having the SD card versus having the dual SIM. Right. Because certainly you, all you need to do is pop, pop the cover well, you can, off. Absolutely. You can always have a different SIM. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. done that many times. Myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. You know, you know, one of the things that BlackBerry is known for, we we own, we bought companies and own some patents on mm -hmm. audio quality. You want to talk a little bit about the audio quality? Was, we, we brought in some of that secret stuff too, right? We did. Um, and one of the things I've really enjoyed about coming to work at BlackBerry is learning about our IP tools. You know, we have an amazing arsenal of intellectual property. Uh, it's a great stock that we've developed over the last 30 years as a company. And that is throughout the, throughout the phone. So the audio quality is good if you're on conference calls. Video conferencing, of course, you've got the high resolution front camera as well as good audio. And it, it works very well with headphones and all the rest. Okay. Okay, great. Um, yeah, again, I see some questions I from people who um, kind of missed in the beginning, but you did uh, confirm that we are doing a, a, a keyboard phone. We are doing a keyboard phone. Yeah. Yep. That's my number The number one question is uh, what's <laughs> going on with keyboards. At BlackBerry, we love keyboards. And by the way, today you have four different options if you want a keyboard. So you have Priv with the slider keyboard, which is a, it's an engineering marvel to be able to do that within the phone. You also have Classic, you have Passport, and you have the Passport Silver Edition. All four of those are available today. So if, if you want a keyboard today, especially on the BB10 operating system, they're there. Um, if, you, uh, if you're looking for a, a different key keyboard form factor on Android other than Priv, it will be this fiscal year. Okay, okay, great. I think we're um, kind of uh, maybe coming down to the end of the event. I think we've got okay. a lot of good questions. I think we answered quite a few, probably 40 or 50 questions. Um, why don't we kind of end by talking a little bit about, again, the um, the availability now and sure. the coming availability in different countries and different carriers. Absolutely. So it's available today uh, on shopblackberry.com. And again, at, at the special uh, $299 US and then at different prices around around the world based on tariffs and currency, et cetera. Um, as a pre-buy special, we're including a very powerful battery pack to recharge this and other devices as well. Uh, I include, it also has a, a, a two watt Port, so it'll do high-speed charging. Yep. And by the way, this does have this does have quick charge 2.0 technology, right. Right. Um, which if you put with a compatible charger, it, it charges this phone very fast. So uh, I really appreciate that, that when you're when you're right. a road warrior and right. you're a and 17 about. hours of battery life anyway. Absolutely. So. Um, and then the phone will start shipping in early August, so it'll become generally available in early August. And around the world, it depends on carrier. Every carrier does their own testing, and we're engaged with all of them today. Uh, maybe, uh, there's country certification, so you'll see a rollout over the next one to two months around the world as it fits into each of the different countries. Right, right. But we've got at least 40 partners already. Absolutely, all over the world. Yeah, and, and yeah. let's talk a little about North America since I know we have a lot of North Americans here. We have in Canada, we're going to be with Rogers, Bell, and TELUS. TELUS, yeah. I think Wind, Video Electron, I think are the ones. Exactly, yeah. And in the U.S., we've already confirmed that we're going to do Best Buy and Best Buy, B and H. Um, Photo, I think that's and Amazon. And Amazon, that's right. Right. Okay, and then we'll just continue to announce more ability in different countries. So you can check back uh, at blackberry.com forward slash dtech50 and also at the Inside Blackberry blogs. So uh, thank you very much, Alex, for joining us today. Absolutely. And um, again, I'll just uh, note that you, know, you can get more information uh, about the phone at uh, blackberry.com slash dtech50. Check out videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, check out uh, Inside Blackberry. We've got a lot of great blogs and information there, and some um, some how to. There's also how to videos on, you can see from the product pages, and, and yeah, and uh, of course there it, the reviews are starting to come out. There's actually some review. I think Tech Radar did a nice yep. uh, review uh, preview of this phone, and we'll be uh, we're distributing the we're showing the the phone to all the media right now. So we'll see reviews coming out in a week or so. Absolutely, or even yeah. sooner. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much.